How's it going? OZ Boy 81. Wanted to do a little quick rundown of my other um, RC full drive Trailfinder 2 Mojave. <clears throat> this is um, kind of my like second attempt at uh, weathering a hard body. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, overall, I think this one came out. Um, a lot better than my other um, weathered body um, but like I said in the, my previous video on that uh, rundown that was the my kind of first attempt but uh, the other one it's growing on me uh, this one um, yeah I really like how it came out but uh, yeah so kind of show you guys what I've done to this this one um, let's start, start with the front. Just got the, just a stock bumper. Didn't really go too crazy on this. I did, uh, do a running video with this one. You guys will see those, um, a little after this, uh, video, uh, post. But I gotta touch up the bottom right there. Um, I did have a rollover, but, uh, Kind of re-weathered some spots where got some damage which is like right there and then a little bit in the back right there and then on the fender uh, right there but overall i think it came out really good the more i weather these bodies um, the more i learn and hopefully the better they come out just kind of show you guys on both sides. It's a chick from uh, Westworld right there. She doesn't have any legs. She lost them, um, but she still manages to uh, drive at five speed. She does pretty good. Inside, I just got some diamond plate. Just a little world atlas. She goes on some adventures. She doesn't get lost. A little soda pop. Um, need to find um, where I can get a little key. If you guys know where I can uh, find some keys, um, uh, let me know. I was thinking about checking out maybe AliExpress or uh, excuse me Etsy. <clears throat> but if I can't find any, I'll try to make make one because I think it really needs a key I'm in the back just got like a little little I don't know a little box um, haven't quite decided what I want to put in the back I'm thinking about putting a tool rack in the back on this one but uh, I haven't quite decided if I want to put uh, a tool rack back there. Um, I know they have those on um, on Etsy uh, for fairly cheap. In the back, just went with the CC hands, um, just the, the white Toyota emblem. Um, just the uh, eBay. Uh, Mojave 2 uh, rear bumper uh, this one normally does come with like a little hoop that goes around um, but it's just bolted on so I just took that off um, I did use a wire brush on the rear bumper um, so it kind of will naturally rust when it gets wet So just so you guys know, um, this is uh, what you would get. You can get these on, on Amazon or eBay, but uh, there's the rear bumper right there. And it's kind of hard to tell, but see those are the little hoops that would go around right here to kind of protect the corner of the of the bed and the light. But I, I just took those off because those are bolted on. Um, I do run those on my other Mojave. And then this is the front bumper, um, which, I don't really like this one for this type of um, um, style that I'm going with. So um, 
can use it for something else. Uh, I haven't quite decided yet. Maybe I'll do like a more of a comp style build one of these days. But uh, yeah, so. Oh, and then just a um, kind of like the, I didn't really want to go with like a rock slider or anything like that. Um, but I did kind of go with like a little skid plate. And this is from um, NM Garage. So still kind of protects the bottom of the body um, and can't really notice it <clears throat> so that'll kind of naturally rust up which that's kind of what i want with this truck just to kind of rust up and and look just old you know so um but i was running uh these these are a little bit smaller than the 155s if uh, you guys know exactly what size these are um, definitely let me know because um, trying to see if they say on there I'm sure they do it is kind of hard to see but these are the Wild Peak Falcons and these are the ones that came on my Toyota 4Runner and they do uh, perform like really well um, I really like these tires they're a little skinny um, but I didn't want to take them apart and paint them because I didn't want the chrome on there. And, um, I had some extra of the of the other RC furl drives. These ones were actually white. I just um, sanded them down and used a wire brush and knocked off as much as that white um, paint, and then just used some automotive um, semi gloss and then uh, used some. Uh, matte clear or whatever on there and I thought that looks a little bit better but these are running the uh, Goodyear Wranglers these are a good tire um, I thought they did pretty good um, like I said you'll kind of see a little running video um, of this um, after this video drops probably a day or so after so um, I think it looks a little bit better or a lot better with uh, with the black and and a Goodyear Wrangler uh, tire on there, but um, this one I add a, a lowering blocks to this one. Uh, you can get on um, RC Full Drive's uh, website. It is a little pricey for the lowering blocks. Um, I wish I had a 3D printer because I would have just 3D printed it. Um, I was trying to find some stuff to. Um, lower it myself but um, I couldn't find anything that would work um, so I ended up having to get the RC flow drive ones um, but I really wanted this truck to sit um, a lot lower than just the regular um, ride height um, and I like how how it sits right now so um, on my other Mojave, I'm just running like a set screw in uh, in the front on uh, either side, and then this one is just what holds the back bed on. Uh, this one, I don't have anything in there. I wish I would have just covered that up when I was painting this body, but um, maybe when I decide to redo it or get another one or something, um, I'll I'll cover that hole up. So. Because uh, I don't ever use it. I just use the set screw in the front and then just the body clips in the back. And I typically put some stuff in the back <clears throat> so you don't really notice some and stuff. But um, This one does have the full LEDs. And in my previous Mojave rundown video, um, I had mentioned that I use these um, switches um, for my LEDs. It uh, helps that you can turn them on and off um, with your like a third or fourth channel you know you can run uh, just your headlights and tail lights to that and then all your marker lights on a separate one depending on how many channels you have and so you can just turn them off and stuff instead of just having to run them all the time uh, you can get those on uh, on Amazon for pretty cheap so yeah it's pretty easy just kind of you know, you pull one side of the body out a little bit right there, and I haven't noticed any, any, you know, wear. Um, but uh, 
yeah it's just pretty quick and easy all right so underneath that lovely body we have uh an enduro 21 turn um i just recently switched the pinion gear was running the stock 14 uh, tooth and i think i switched it to a let's see i switched it to a 13. wanted to try that out um see how that does and then i also got a um a 12 tooth uh, pinning gear um running a hobby wing 10 1080 this is a two speed um running just a 20 kg um amazon uh shift servo um for steering servo running uh 35 kg BETU. Um, I did have to raise it up uh, because I lowered it, and I'll show you why. Um, this is for the lights, the on and off uh, switches inside there. So uh, the shocks, um, I think, are 80 mil in the rear and 90 in the front because uh, I'm running the Galante 2 shock hoops um, since we're in the front right now I just made my own little inner fenders I was going to get the RC four wheel drive ones and I'm sure another company makes them but uh, I didn't want to pay what they were um, asking for so I just ended up making my own and they work just fine but uh yeah, so that's pretty much it for electronics. Um, it does pretty good uh, for what I use this rig for. Um, I don't need nothing really fancy. Um, so yeah, so I lowered this truck with the lowering blocks. Um, and by doing that, I had to reverse or kind of flip these um, shackle mounts. Um, you see how they sit forward well, normally they would sit back, but when you sit them back towards the uh, rear bumper, these would kind of just collapse and they weren't um, working correctly. So I had to switch those facing forward and it works uh, works fine uh, by doing it like that. Um, let's see if I can get this propped up without me leaning over too much so I'll show you guys well I'll just hold it so in the rear I'm running an enduro uh, drive shafts and I actually really like these drive shafts they make a couple different style of drive shafts but uh, these ones are kind of like I don't know heavier duty built in my opinion and they're pretty reasonable priced and oh uh, I got two of them. I'm running a, the, the front one is a little different, so um, I'll just run with that one for a while. I'll make sure you phase your uh, your drive shafts, you know, because you you you, you got to do that. So these are the enduro ones. I'll show you right there. But these have like a little brass center ball. Um, they got some pretty good weight. These kind of remind me, and correct me if I'm wrong, of uh, like the Intigy ones. They kind of have that design, but like I said, it could be wrong. But uh, these these work pretty good. Um, just to keep in mind, sometimes when you order drive shafts, if you have an output shaft on. You know, let's say your transfer case or your transmission or even your uh, your your output shaft on your diff. Uh, sometimes on uh, what I've found on RC four wheel drives and a few other rigs, they're they're just a hair too long, and when you go and put the drive shaft in, the output shaft will hit on the little ball right there and can cause you a little bit of binding. So. 
I don't remember if I had to kind of shave that down on this or not, but uh, just be aware sometimes it just depends on how far back uh, the set screw is right there that you might have to do that and I don't recall if I had to do it on this or not but um, if you notice that <clears throat> you see how the end of the drive shaft like this piece right here kind of give you a little bit better example I don't know when my phone's lighting stripping out you see how it's hitting the back of that ball right there sometimes the output shaft will do that and it'll cause some binding so just thought I'd let you know that, but like I said, I don't, I don't think I had to do that on this. Um, but it's not just because of these drive shafts. I've, I've had that happen on other, other brands of drive shafts. But yeah. So um, running one leaf front and rear on this rig, and it performs good. You know, I don't have any issues with just running the one leaf. Um, running the A&M Garage anti rat bar. Uh, this drive shaft is just a eBay one that I had laying around. Um, it's holding up pretty good. Uh, so that's why I haven't put the other one on there yet. I'm just going to run, run this one until I decide to change it. But for now, that's, that's what's staying in there. Um, uh, I don't know if I said this, but it's the Bauhaus High Clearance Skid. Um, but other than that, underneath, I didn't really change anything other than just adding the adding the lowering box. You can't really tell, but they're on there. Um, I did have to move this steering link right there. You see how it kind of faced up a little bit? You got some lighting. You see how it kind of faced up? It kind of arches up like that. I had to do that with this because I, I lowered it and I tried it the other way that the way that you're supposed to do it and it just wasn't working out right for me. So I had to do it like that. It doesn't interfere with the, the spur gear or anything like that. So um, it worked out. It kind of changed when I lowered it, kind of changed the, the toe and it was just, I don't know, it was just kind of off. So I had to tinker with it a little bit just to get uh, my wheels, you know, relatively straight. So, um, got that figured out and it, it seems to be working fine. So, just some pros and cons that you have to uh, overcome when you, you know, change the suspension. But uh, it all worked out in the end. Well, that's uh, pretty much everything that I have done. I mean, not it's not too much that I've done. Well, I mean, there, it's quite a bit but, um, for some people, but other people would you know, tend to do a lot more. But you know, just trying to keep it as you know budget friendly as possible. So. body in there they're just like that it's in, it's in there but it's really good so yeah I just thought I'd share that with you guys uh, on this build I really like how it came out um, I like how it performs uh, especially with it being really low um, it's definitely a lot different driving experience with uh, driving a leaf spring truck versus like a four link and stuff, which, you know, I have and they're fun. Um, but I've been leaning towards more of the, the hard bodies and um, leaf spring trucks lately. Um, but uh, yeah, so if you guys have any questions or comments or not, you know, I uh, always like to read what you guys have to say. Um, so definitely let me know what you guys think about this. Um, I've been thinking about picking up another body and doing something a little different. Uh, just haven't had a time, been really busy with work and stuff. So, 
Um, but uh, we are coming up to that winter season, so I might just uh, order another one. I might just order that new, uh, what is it, the Chevy, Chevy body that they have. I might pick up one of those. But uh, you guys will just have to wait and and see. But uh, yeah, so apologize for the long video. Um, there was kind of a lot to to go through over um but like i said uh let me know what you guys think and i'll talk to you later